In today's video, we're gonna share our number one and number two tips for booking those dream projects and getting paid to do the work that you are dying to do. I'm Alana and this is my business partner, Katie. We are two self-employed artists and we are on a mission to help other artists like you make money doing the work that they love. If this sounds like something you need, hit that subscribe button so you never miss one of our weekly videos to help you grow your art business. it feels like you need to know somebody who knows somebody to get the job and today we're going to talk about our favorite ways to get in front of those people. Most of my favorite projects have come from this simple tip that has booked me some of my biggest jobs. Plus it's something you can start implementing in your business right away. Are you ready? <laughs> Outreach. It's so important when you're a self-employed artist that you start asking for what you want. That means putting your work out there sending cold emails and getting in touch with buyers, art directors, whatever the client may be, so you can start booking your dream projects. My book deal, outreach. I pitched it to my publisher. My first licensing job, I contacted them and asked if they were working with artists. It just shows that so many things can come from putting yourself out there. There are several ways to do outreach and it can come in a lot of shapes and sizes. So I wanna give you a couple examples. Art licensing is a perfect one to start with. One of the best ways to get your work in front of those buyers is to check the website of the company you wanna work with and see if they have submission guidelines. A lot of these companies will have guidelines so you can just follow the guidelines and send the email. Another opportunity might be following someone on Instagram, sending them a DM and building a relationship with them over time. Another might be reaching out to someone on LinkedIn and sending a message or even just sending a cold email to the general contact form on a brand's website and asking if you can get pointed in the right direction. I mean, think about it. What's the worst they're gonna say? No? <laughs> okay. Another great example of this is if you have a product shop, you could bring your product into local stores and ask if they are looking to expand their lines that they carry and leave them with a wholesale catalog or a sample of your work so that they can do the research and see if you're a good fit. You can also do this with stores that aren't local by emailing them and attaching all the information they might need to discover your line. At the end of the day, outreach is all about making a human connection and it can take a lot of years for the project to come to fruition. My favorite experience was when I asked an art director at a major company out to coffee. We had a mutual friend and I asked them, I introduced myself via email and I asked them if I could, I was gonna be in town, could I come and have coffee with them and share my work with them and ask them some questions. At the time, my portfolio was not quite where it is today. It wasn't as strong as it is now, and it was very small. Now, five years later, we have booked several jobs together, and it took time, but I kept on their radar and keeping in touch with them over the years, and eventually it turned into some really fun projects. It's important that you know your target market. It's important that you understand what your buyers are looking for or your clients or your dream projects are, and really cater your outreach to them. I did the exact same thing when I was looking for a job out of school. I got a list of all the art directors in the area that I wanted to live in, and I sent them these really funny greeting cards. I sent them over four days, and they didn't have my name or anything personalized on it, so it was like I was sending them mysterious mail for four days. And then the last day, it had more information about me and why I was sending them all this. So it left them intrigued. A lot of them called me back later and said they hung them in their office because they thought the prints were really funny. And it was a great story and a great icebreaker. And I think it's something that they remember. It led to a lot of opportunities to work with them later on and throughout the years. I have a friend who really wanted to do a home decor line and she couldn't find anyone to partner with right off the bat. So she made the line herself. She did one off pillows and welcome mats and things like that. And she did this amazing photo shoot. Then she took all those images and sent them to brands and said, this is what I'm envisioning. This is the line I wanna create. Would you like to create it with me? But just sending the email isn't enough. There's a second step, which is probably the thing you need to be working on first that I really want you to focus on in order to get your work in front of those dream clients. That's honing in on your style, your voice, and your portfolio to make sure it's a good fit for the people you're reaching out to. So if you really wanna do home decor, then start filling your portfolio with home decor projects. It doesn't matter if they're fake or mock-ups or not a real brand, just show the work that you're capable of doing. If you're a lettering artist and you wanna do greeting cards, start making greeting cards. If you're not showcasing the work you wanna get, how is someone gonna know that's what you're good at? Plus, when you do these fake or pseudo projects, just for your portfolio and to showcase your work, it really helps you hone in on your skill set and even helps you develop your voice. I know we are all so busy with client work and keeping up with what's next, 
but it's really important to carve out this time for your personal practice so that you can start booking the jobs that you really want to get if you're not booking them already. Put it out into the world and it will come back to you. If you are multi-passionate, you can still apply this as well. Just focus on a few different areas and find a way to intermix them. Maybe you love music, but you also love designing. Maybe you're designing album covers and doing one every week and putting beautiful music over your time lapse. There are so many ways to overlap your creativity and that's what can make you so unique and make you so memorable to your clients. So the biggest takeaway is create the type of work you want to get so that people can find you for it and you can become known for that type of work. Then start showing it to people. Find a way to get in touch with them, whether that's through email or trying to connect on social media in an authentic way that's all about human connection and building relationships over time. Just like any other industry, some emails are gonna go unanswered, but for everyone that goes unanswered or ghosted or whatever it may be, there will also be someone who says yes and is so excited to work with you. So let us know in the comments what type of outreach you're gonna be doing and what your dream project really is. Then make sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of our weekly tips about growing your art business. We are artists who mean business and we're in this with you.